we'll start with tips for strength and conditioning coaches that are listening in that have had uh, a struggle in the workplace to connect or get on the same page with their medical um, teammates. Well, well, I think so. When we started this sort of movement in, uh, it was 1995. So ESSA hadn't been sort of invented at that time. And we took in the first ever exercise physiologist graduates. Um, and there was nowhere else for an exercise physiologist to go except for our business because of the relationships we created with orthopedic surgeons that were forward thinking about going, look, and, and when I say this, Chris, because we've got physios and S&Cs and everyone on board, it was just that thing of just going, sometimes the minute stuff around just spending too much time doing a clam and doing all that sort of stuff wasn't relevant and just firing up a good old glute max and having a femoral head sit better in a hip joint around a whole host of things. I think the key component is I use a saying a lot and I say, seek first to understand where someone comes from. So I think mm. the beauty of what we're talking about today is we've got these really wonderful strength and conditioning coaches who have such amazing strengths. And then like in our clinic, we've got, you know, five or six of those and then we who are working in AFL systems and so forth. And then we've also got, you know, seven or eight physiotherapists as well. And the soft cap's been good to us. Where we've been able to pinch a couple of guys that, you know, with young families haven't perhaps been able to, um, you know, commit to a football club on that level. Uh, and so then it's enabled us to sort of talk about that Venn diagram where, you know, if we understand where the strength and conditioning coach is coming from, and if we understand where the physiotherapist is coming from, we know that from an S&C component that a physiotherapist is probably going to be more often than not conservative with some things. And we know that probably traditionally the S&C person without perhaps the injury history component in where their trainings come from is possibly going to be trying to push the envelope. Then you've got, you've got your sports med docs, your high performance coaches, and also we, we look at the dynamic and especially we've certainly seen that in the last five years is everyone's trying to look after their job in the high performance environment. And so it can, you know, if the club's doing well, well, fantastic. But if the club's struggling, then obviously that can become somewhat of a shit show. So we're in private practice now. So by developing relationships, by understanding whether it's within the clinic, I think, I think that Venn diagram rather than there only being a small meeting point. Mm. What I like to talk about is that that Venn diagram meeting point becomes bigger. Yeah, you mentioned the importance of building that relationship. In, in a leadership position for a facility, like you have the ability where your physios and strength and conditioning coaches are actually in the same building, so that must help, opposed to obviously working via email and those sort of communication platforms where other clinics um, may have to do if they're not working together. Um, but it, it, when, and I imagine it happens at time in your uh, facility where they are butting heads and they're not seeing eye to eye, but they're managing the same athlete. As it, from a leader's perspective, how do you? Are we saying? You are, we, are we saying in the facility, or are we saying in the, um, or, or just out with? Are they at a footy club? Now within your facility. So for for for, for business owners that would never really happen. Like would never happen. Like in terms of there could be a, a budding head around some comfortable dialogue because I would I would get my experience S and C's to be wanting to challenge the physio. But the other thing we we do to break down those barriers, if we had a Mike Crichton working, I'd have him present a lot of information to the physios because the physios have received their training and that's what they do. And I would have the physios doing a lot of presenting uh, presenting to Mike. And so Mike already understands that, mm, you know what, he's actually not that strong in that area. Or we always know that Dave is coming from that space. For the athletes as well as coaches, practitioners, uh, parents that want to send their kids to your clinic, where's the best place to get in contact? Uh, so it's just uh, I'm more aligned with the, the old blokes in the group. So anyone with a bald head and my grey beard, just remember it's the Sports Clinic of Melbourne. That's where I, I work. Uh, Vic Active is still going to be doing a little bit of work this year just to put a bit of political pressure on the landscape. We've got some stuff coming out in the next couple of weeks in Victoria just to make sure that uh, we get an essential service type scenario going. Not so there's, there's, there's a couple of things there coming out in the next month that I've, uh, I've, I've just sort of got humming along in the background. Uh, and then I've got the 
Instagram, Tim Schleiger coach page, but, you know, any of that sort of stuff, people can find me if they want. And if they don't, that's fine too. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Thanks, folks.